Hello and welcome to another video for STAT420. Um, in this video, we are going to continue looking at multiple linear regression, uh, but focusing more on um, our beta hat, so kind of our parameter estimates, and just kind of thinking again more about the fact that um, these beta hat values um, still have a distribution. So again, there exist true beta parameters, right? So there is a true kind of undergirding relationship um, among these variables. Um, that we can represent with some parameters. Um, however, wherever we're kind of taking a random sample of uh, values here, so if we have a random sample of observations where we're collecting information from predictor one, predictor two, and any other predictors um, in the response variable, um, then we're going to kind of fit a model. We're going to fit kind of a, um, a model that has the least amount of, of error, uh, that minimizes the squared residuals to the smallest amount. So with that said, if we think about kind of the, all the different samples that we could take, um, right? So, you know, I could take a sample of 50, somebody else could take a sample of 50. Um, we're all going to have slightly different parameter estimates again. So we've talked about this before with simple linear regression. Um, so we're just kind of, you know, reminding ourselves again that if I have a beta hat not value, so, um, oops, I need to write. Um, so we're gonna have all possible beta hat knots um, are going to be normally distributed around the true beta knot value, whatever that parameter is in the relationship that these, these variables have. Um, it's going to be normally distributed around that value. I can do the same thing for beta hat 1. So beta hat 1 is going to be normally distributed around beta 1. I can do the same thing for beta hat 2. Uh, so the distribution of possible beta hat 2s that are going to be normally distributed around the true beta 2 value. So if we think again about inference, it's this idea of I have a sample of, of data here, and I'm trying to make an inference about what could be true about the population. What could the parameters be? And I know that my beta hat values fall somewhere in these distributions around the parameters. I don't know exactly where. I don't know if, for example, it's right here, or if it's right here, or if it's right over here, you know. But I do, I can kind of calculate how wide this distribution can be, and therefore I can kind of estimate, you know, what proportion of the time I'm going to be this distance, or this distance, or this distance away from the parameter, given that I know how wide this distribution really is. So it's kind of like, uh, if you think about, you know, I'm in the dark. So I, I think about this like when I when I go to bed and I have like a nightstand, there's a lamp on it. Um, like if I'm walking kind of in the dark, I know where my bed starts. Like I know where the end of my bed is. And I know generally about how long my bed is. So I know that if I walk a certain amount of distance, the lamp should be in this area somewhere. I don't know exactly, like I'm not going to go like, you know, click it and I know exactly where it is. Instead, I just know it's kind of close, right? So I know I'm in this distribution. I don't know if I'm this close or this close or this close, but I know, I know like kind of my max from the air most likely so that hopefully I don't just like knock the lamp over and, you know, really miss my estimate. So kind of the same thing with beta hat values, if, if that analogy is at all helpful to thinking about that. Now, as we talked about in the previous video, beta hat, um, you know, like I have a set of beta hat values for each parameter estimate. So I can kind of think about beta hat as like a vector of, of parameter estimates for as many predictors plus intercept that I have in this model. So if I only have two predictors, then beta hat is a vector of three values. If I have seven predictors, beta hat is a vector of eight values. We also talked in the previous video, we didn't really derive it um, or anything as much as we just kind of stated that um, the least squares estimate for beta hat can be represented with this expression right here. Um, the inverse of x transpose times x times x transpose times y. Um, and so x transpose times x is kind of like, you might think of it kind of like x squared. Uh, if you've taken linear algebra, you know that matrix multiplication works a little bit differently. And so if I'm multiplying something by itself, um, then I have to transpose um, one matrix if I want it to kind of function like x squared, like I'm trying to square the elements in the matrix in some way. 
Um, so we know that beta hat is represented as this expression that if I have my vector of x values, you know, you know, for predictor one, predictor two, predictor three, and I multiply this expression times the y values, this is going to give me my beta hat vector. Um, another kind of hand waving is the variance of beta hat can be represented by sigma squared times the inverse of um, x transpose times x. Um, so we're not really, again, deriving exactly why that's the case and how we arrive at that um, as much as we're just kind of trusting that, um, that um, properties of multivariate distributions, if we run through um, the calculation, this is the expression that we could arrive at. Where again, sigma squared is the variance of the residual value. So, so if kind of my y hats minus my actual y's um, squared and finding kind of the average squared residual, um, that's how I would get the sigma squared of the residuals times this expression. Um, therefore, we can say that beta hat follows a multivariate normal distribution. Let me move my base out of the way because um, that's kind of in the way. Um, so that all, all that said, we can say that the vector beta hat follows a multivariate normal distribution centered at the vector of true betas times this um, expression for the variance. Um, so we say a multivariate distribution because beta hat is not just a single value, it's a vector of values. So, so we're basically trying to express the distribution of all the beta hats kind of in one neat expression, which we can do since beta is also a vector, this is also going to come out to be a vector. Or actually, let's see, no, this is not a vector, um, but it still works. Um, and I said it's not a vector because this is what it is. Um, so x transpose x inverse is a matrix. Um, and so we can represent this matrix. Um, so we're going to kind of simplify this because this kind of gets kind of um, tedious to say x transpose x inverse or the inverse of x transpose x. We're just going to call it C. Because why not? That's what we do in math, is we, we rename things with a single letter so we can say it. Um, and so if we think about this matrix C, we can kind of label all these entries, you know, C00, C01, C02, and these represent um, kind of the um, a variance element for each um, beta hat that I might be looking at. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take um, an element down the diagonal um, into this expression. Um, so if we're looking at the variance for beta hat j as an example, then we're going to be looking for term c sub jj in this matrix. So if beta hat, if we're looking at beta hat naught, then we're looking for c zero zero. So we're looking for the, the entry in this part of the vector. If we're looking for the variance of beta hat two, we're going to be looking for um, the entry in the second row, or well, I guess it'd be the third row, third column, but labeled with a 2, 2. Now, I'll just kind of mention this is notational. Like, you know, we start at 0, so then like 0 is in the first row, you know, 1 is going to be in the second row, second column, et cetera. So that's also just kind of confusing. Um, and it's just, it's done this way typically because we want to match it with the, the number of the predictor, right? So if I'm looking at beta hat naught, I'm looking for this value. If I'm looking for beta hat 2, I'm looking for this value. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. It won't be super important in this class um, as much as we're just kind of constructing the logic of what's going on and paying attention to what results we're going to be using from this. Um, okay, so given that expression, so given this variance, um, we could also represent this as a standard deviation, right? So it's also the standard deviation of beta hat j, whatever, whichever one it is, is then going to be sigma um, again, of the residuals, if I want to add that notation, times the square root of this entry of the matrix. So that said, I can also estimate the standard error of a particular beta hat naught. So if I don't have sigma, which I probably won't if I'm doing inference, uh, I'm going to have this, the sample standard deviation in my residuals. So instead, I'm going to have S sub E times the square root of CJJ. And so this would represent kind of my best estimate for the senior deviation of beta hat j. Um, now, that said, since we're taking an estimate, um, we can standardize uh, beta hat j in comparison to its true beta j value that it's estimating. We can divide it by this um, standard error value. And these standardized values are going to follow a t distribution. 
Now, if I had um, beta hat j, so some randomly um, simulated um, beta hat estimate for beta j, then the distribution of beta hat j from beta j, if divided by the true standard deviation here, this would be normal. Um, so this would be normal um, with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, variance of one, whatever you want to say there. Um, but since I don't have this, right, so since I don't have this, I'm estimating with this, that's what makes it a t-distribution. So a t-distribution is kind of like a, you know, a normal distribution corrected. It's a slightly wider normal distribution. Um, and that happens when I have a little bit of error kind of in the method. I have a little bit of estimation um, that's therefore going to make this distribution just a little bit wider than it would normally be when I do that. Um, yeah, and that's it. So, so kind of the big idea of this video is just um, saying that beta hats have a distribution. We don't know when we're doing inference where our particular beta hats fall, but we know they're in some distribution around the parameters. Um, we can calculate the variance of any individual beta hat using this expression. There's some math involved that we don't necessarily care about. All we really care about is kind of this final product of this is where these values are coming from. Then we also remind ourselves that we can't calculate the true standard deviation of beta hat j, but we can calculate the standard error with our sample information. And we know that this standardized value is going to follow a t-distribution, which we can use if we're wanting to construct a confidence interval or maybe construct um, a hypothesis test for you know, judging a per, like a candidate value for beta j. Uh, 